All right, all right, everyone focused. I gotta get focused. So here's what's happening. Going through my to-do review desk there, and I realize that almost none of these are gonna get a singular review because it's just no one's gonna watch it. So I figure if you use the chapter marks in the description and thank my sponsor, Linsol, linsol.com. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Linsol.com, your source for IMs, portable players, um, actually like decent reviews on there like people who actually pay attention they have a bunch of cables and interconnects they have sales all the time if it's early uh november which is probably roughly when this is coming out there's a sale i think they're, they're doing their 11 11 sale for the entire first half of the month so check them out for that they're getting the top billing in this which helps this channel move along because what i'm going to talk about in fact i don't think they sell x duo because this is the x duo review this is hey Zios, have you have any new X Duo stuff on the horizon? And I'm like, <laughs> how about six things? And they've been piling up for a couple months now. I'm like I'll get something and I'll be like, oh, I'll put it on the side, and then I get something else, something else. And um, this is the only thing that's not. This is not an X Duo. This is an FX Audio. But I brought it an X Duo because it's basically the same goddamn thing. And we'll talk about it. And this is ridiculous. And I have to hook that up to the amp. And I've got the uh, Harmonic Dyne actually. Linsol Harmonic Dyne. These are the, the one of the better headphones that you can get. The uh, P200s, D200s. No, it'd be P200 makes sense. These are the G200s. Yeah, I don't like the name. If you're making a planar, if Harmonic Dyne's making a planar, why not the P? Why the G? Anyway, hooked up with their stock cable to the uh, topping LA90, and what we're looking at is a little baby DAC, and then a little bigger DAC. And then a Bluetooth DAC slash digital converter, and then a tube receiver, essentially DAC, because it's receiving Bluetooth through that. And then this monster mega Bluetooth receiver, I shit you not, this entire brick is just to receive Bluetooth. Uh, it's got a coaxial in and out, so I add an, an optical out. So it's, it's coaxial in means it's got another thing. It means it's a DAC, but look at the size of it. And then this little tiny little baby FX audio that's been hanging around. And I'm like, ooh, it's a little tiny BL Muso one. And then I'm like, wait a second. I had this on my shelf, on the actual shelf, because Extro did something and it's got a display, which just like this display will actually tell you the, the song that's playing. And these are balanced and I hold on a second. Be right back. All right, so real quick before the song ends. Um, this is an assessment of the MU605, the Bluetooth receiver. So here it is, nice little screen, pair button, uh, play pause, no next track, not double press, not hold, just will pause and will unpause, just like X2O to fuck that up. Anyway, it's kind of a cool looking unit. I was really excited because of how short these are. That's the whole point. Like this is a fat, deep unit. And by the time you put XLRs in the back of it, it's, it's too deep for a desk. But if you have a short desk, Boom, short, stubby little fucker. So um, we're gonna get to this deck. So what's happening right now? I can't, can I pause everything? I think I can pause everything. Okay, so the computer is playing the same track, Yoko Kano, What Planet Is This? The live rendition, the same as on my phone from the seatbelts from, from Cowboy Bebop. Um, Bluetoothing LDAC, says LDAC, from the phone to this unit. And the MU65 is hooked up balanced, to the topping LA90. LA90 is a very special unit. Not just because it sounds amazing, it's $900 speaker amp and I've got it adapted, but because I could take three balanced inputs and just switch between them, all right? If, if anything else comes out of this video is that you're gonna buy a fucking LA90 because you have three sources you need to compare and this is how you do it. So I plug this into that and I say, all right, let's check it out. It's probably gonna sound good enough. Sounds like shit. The balanced output onto that was so atrocious. And I mean, like, not like, oh, it's like, it's not quite on par. No, it's bad. It's low. it's like the treble's completely missing and it's in mono. And it's not, because it's not. Um, so I say, okay, this unit, the 605, has digital outputs. So I didn't use AES, even though that would be the cooler thing to use because it's rare to have like a digital AES output. I used a coaxial digital output. And it has an optical output. So I take the coaxial digital output, and I'm like, fuck it. Let's go for broke. Jennifer's Aries 2 R2R DAC. Plug this into another input 
on the topping. So now I'm outputting the straight outputs of this into the topping and the outputs of the Denifrips Aries via coaxial digital into this unit. And I can compare A and B. And I'm like, all right, I know this song and it definitely sounds better through the Aries. Like, obviously, it's, it's like an $800 fucking art to our like top of line DAC. I love it. But it still doesn't sound great. So whip out another coaxial digital from the computer into the MU604, which I guess this is the review for that now as well. Uh, input and menu on the front of this. Uh, if we hold on that button, we get to the menu. And you basically have setup, brightness, and LED on. And it's real. It's a. It, that, no, setup is the name of the menu. And then it's brightness and filter. That's all you get. And you get to switch brightness. It's one, two, three. And you turn the LED on or off, which are the ones around the buttons, which are really cool because they're orange. And I like orange LEDs. It's really nice. Then you can switch between filters one or two. Not seven, one or two with the DAC. So now I take the real song, Flack, not being transferred. And then here's the thing. I have a high faith in Bluetooth. LDAC is as close to, to perfect as I fucking need. I'll assess anything I want on like a, a BTR7, just LDAC. I'm fine with it. I'll, I'll, I believe it. I trust it. So I know it's not the Bluetooth codec. And it says it's running LDAC. So this output sounds like absolute dog shit. The Denifrips Aries output sounds better, but still not like the original FLAC file. Blow the FLAC file through Coaxa Digital via Sings or whatever the fuck, my normal setup, bounced out of this into the unit to the same topping LA90. Oh, that's crystal clear and like discernible and stereo and wide. And it's one of the best songs of my favorite songs. So this is, this is official. The MU605 hooked up to a brand new Sony phone. Let's see, unpause that. Hold on. All right, input two is this. Absolute dog shit. Sounds mono. Like, that's definitely, that's, I unplug it, a channel goes out. LDAC, there's no options. It, it just doesn't. I wonder. You know what? I gotta know. I gotta know. Uh, headphone demo. Headphone demo. Oh, it's not gonna do it because it's the other thing. All right. Oh, I fucked that up because I'm dumb. Um, I, I, it sounds mono. It's this. The outputs in this sound mono. Now, am I gonna even bother testing the RCS? No, because it's balanced. Sucks. Sucks. So, but now here's the real problem. What it should do, just like the BTA30, is it should take the digital input from the Bluetooth and just convert it to digital and let the let the DAC do its thing. The problem is, I got the, one of the world's greatest DACs right here, plugged into one of the world's greatest amps, and it still sounds kind of like shit. It's better than this. Like if I, if I unpause this again, and I, like go. It, 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 I don't know if you'll be able to hear this, but ready? No, you're not gonna be able to hear it. But it's like, okay, it's like 70% better sounding through the Denifrips Aries. And then you bounce all the way back to where the fuck I was complaining a second ago. Let's put it right to the end of the song. Where are we, like four minutes in here? And now, now input one is this. Yeah, input one is now this. And it's like, okay, there's the extra 25%. And that means that at this moment, this little MU604 sounds better than a Denifrips Aries. And it's not the Denifrips Aries fault, and this thing isn't the greatest thing in the world. It's because this thing sucks. MU605, I didn't think it could suck. Maybe my unit's defective. All right, I have to throw that out there. But something is wrong with this. This is a no-go. So now let's clear some shit off the desk and, and try, try again. So now I'm trying to connect the uh, XQ100, which is a nearly $400 Bluetooth receiving DAC that also happens to have a coaxial in, but only that DAC, and it won't connect to my Bluetooth. Like it's there. And it goes connect, and it just it doesn't connect. And it says unpaired, and I got the fucking manual pamphlet out. And it's like double press the play pause button to put it into a forced pairing state. Meanwhile, the screen just says, oh, this is such a heavy unit. It just says Bluetooth unpair. And no matter what I do, if I turn it off, 
Run 110. Here's your switch here. Turn it on. Goes through the Exudo. Exduo. Exodo. Existence? That was a weird movie. I don't know if that was a good movie or bad. It's just a movie. It takes forever to boot. Then it says XQ100 unpair. And that's all it says. And if I tell it to forget this here, I go back. It's going to pair a new device. Wait for it. It's going to be there. It's going to be there. It's not there. It should be there. Let's, uh, let's see if I double press this. Because nothing changes there. No. Nope. Now it's not even showing up. Now it's not even showing up. Antenna's plugged in. Oh, there it is. XQ100. Click. Pair. Watch this. It's going to ask me once to share my contacts. Don't need to do that. It goes up. XQ100. And that's down here. Can I, uh, XQ100. Oh, sweet. It's going to be great. And down here. Uh, so the plan was, the plan was to test out the outputs on this unit, which is a much more expensive unit compared to like the Denifrips Aries. But if I can't Bluetooth to it, then I can't. Y you feel me? I mean, I still can. Here's what I could do. I would now disconnect the coaxial jumper that's going from here to there. I'd have to take, this is the coaxial from the computer going to this unit. I'll take this, plug this in to this unit's in and out, then switch this input to coaxial, which says no signal. And there's definitely signal. Now what is it? Am I hallucinating? No. Wow, it didn't it doesn't even find the signal from the um from the computer. See that says no signal because I unplugged it. If I unplug this from here, I did plug this into the correct unit, right? Yeah. Coaxial in out. Then there's optical out, then there's left and right out, and there's balanced out. Plugging this into here should give a signal, and it says no signal. So now unplug this, and I plug it back into the MU604 DAC here, 441. So this unit refuses to work at all. And it's been sitting there haunting me like, oh man, I'm gonna have to do a whole review on this unit. And it just it doesn't want to make the go, and it still shows up even when it's not in coax and when it's not in Bluetooth mode, and does the same same thing no matter what. It doesn't change. Then I read the manual, whatever little bit of manual there was. It's got good spec. If this worked, it'd be it'd be interesting because then it could be like the main Bluetooth receiver. Like it'd be nice to have a Bluetooth receiver with a really nice DAC in it. But it's like this is a why. I don't understand the, the, the need, all right? I don't understand the need. I need to understand the need, I'm Zeus. I am the everyday man, and I can have all this shit, but at the end of the day, I have to understand the need for the most human beings on the earth. And a uh, $400, you know, Bluetooth receiver, look, there are DACs that have Bluetooth in it. Most of the topic, most of the SMSL higher end DACs have Bluetooth and remote controls and filter settings, and all sorts of nice things. I will say, I think I know why this doesn't work, because X-Duo remembered to put next track, last track buttons on it, so we'll be able to switch between <laughs> the only unit in the fucking gear Earth, besides their balanced one, where you actually have like very easy like next track, last track, play pause. And I tried holding both of these, in case the, the manual was wrong, just to get it to pair, and she don't pair. Look how much space there would be for waifus. Could... But nope. So this one is, um, that's a lost cause. So I'm gonna turn the camera off again and reorganize and we'll just keep going through the list. All right, the next little science experiment. So now I've got the MU604, same song, Tower of God Aquarium versus Tower of God Aquarium versus this thing, which is the, what the hell is your model number? The MU603. So this is a little tube Bluetooth receiver, that's all it is. It's got two sets of RCA outs. They're the same exact output. There's no controls, there's no buttons. There's a power switch and a pair button that just, you hold it down to pair for three seconds, you hold it down for six seconds. It forgets all pairings. That's all it does. There's no other options. There's a screw on the bottom for no reason. And I'm comparing the sound output of this. <coughs> Balance from there to the sound output from this. RCA to there, I've lowered the computer and it's just, there is an actual audible to be difference 
Um, it actually is one of those weird tubes that makes things slightly brighter. There are tubes that make things quieter and wider and warmer. But the sound difference, at least from this, which is an essentially unknown DAC to me, I'm going to give it a recommendation because so far it sounds pretty fucking good. And it works, which is nice. And this works, which is nice. Also, very cool. They give you a silicone thumb condom that slides over the tube as it ships with the tube in place. And I've never seen that. And I think more companies should do this because who doesn't need thumb condoms? So I'm not going to put it on while it's running. But yeah, no, that just slides on over. Shit could ship all their stuff with that. So now what do we got? Uh, that's too short a song. Give me another song. Odessa Higher Ground. So let's go. We're going to laugh. Higher Ground. Odessa. Boom. And then we're going to go. We're going to drag this back to zero. And I'm going to hit that. And okay, now they're both playing the same song again. Tube. Yeah, I'm actually going to raise that volume. There, uh, all I want to hear with a tube device is different. Assuming that this is neutral and straight and, and single-ended and, you know, there's no fucking fucking around. Well, it's actually balanced. It's not single-ended. But assuming that this doesn't have any class A fuckery or any sort of weird op amps and that this is neutral, this sounds different. And it's adorable. I actually have the prices up. I opened up all of these on APOS. If APOS didn't send me all these, well, I'll link to the proper places. But uh, so that thing, 389. I'm sure it works fine for other people. It doesn't work for me. Next. Oh, that's where it's for. That's why it's so big. It's so you can put your XA, so you can put your fucking giant extra tubes on top of it. All right. Forget that one for now. It's too expensive regardless of how it sounds. It would have to have been like God tier. So we're going to close that one. Um, we're gonna get to this one. We're on the the Bluetooth receiver. Fucking the 605 was 179, so that's a no. That sounded like ass. Uh, although when something sounds that bad, Bluetooth, it usually means it's hooking up as a communication device and not a music device. Because when you use a headset, microphone out is a channel, and microphone and sound in is a channel. So it's like mono and low bit rate. So that could very well be the reason that this sound like ass. Problem is, I got no way to tweak it. So for now, I'm just going to say whatevs on that. BTA 30 is fine. Um, this guy here, 169. Solid so far. It's dual DAX. What DAC chips? Dual DAC chips. What DAC chip? ESS chips. Doesn't say what, so what model. What model ESS chip? It's got to be listed here somewhere in the 9,700 things that APOS has a goddamn... How do they get so many pictures? There should be like a, a, a legal precedent. Where'd you go? Are you not around? Did I not open a tab for you? Anyway, wait, where are you? In here? Here. Here it is. No. Yes. Here. $119. I will accept for 100... Part of middle click didn't you get? For $119... If you're looking for a Bluetooth receiver, that's a little different. Not a lot of different, but like a little different. Like this is kind of cool. If you have like, hey, I hook up to my vintage stereo and I have a Bluetooth. It's a cute thing. It's cute. It's it's fucking cute. All right. It's got very simple uh, blue and green LEDs. It's HD is lit up. It doesn't do LDAC. It only does Aptex HD is the highest this will go. But I, I can accept this for 120 bucks as like an odyssey, an oddity. Yes, you can get a cheaper thing. You can get a BTA 30 who does digital outputs and sounds like clean and neutral. But fuck, I'm not going to argue with a little tiny uh, Bluetooth 5. Uh, look, at it. it's exactly what it's for. You put it into your powered monitors and it sounds a little different than just stock. They either integrating a tube. You're paying extra for that little $50 tube sound. I'm fine with this. Great, the song just ended. Hold on. It doesn't distort either, but there's no volume controls. There's no next tracks. It's just, the pair button could have been double click for pause and hold for next track. I still accept this. It works. Here's your power brick you got to get for it. A lot of these little ones have this 12 volt. These have the same 12 volt. 
this and this one. It's like a, it's a full size power plug, a 12 volt adapter. Okay, so now this is done. I'm gonna put this in the back. We're gonna switch back to input one. Now I'm actually looking at just you, the MU604. I'm actually gonna shut this off and then I don't know the two, it's not that hot. I'm gonna slide that over there just so you can see it. Look how cute that is. Um, don't leave that on, your tube will explode. Hi. This is actually decent. It's good. It's under $200. There's a ton of under $200 DAX from SMSL and Topping and shit. JDS Labs. All of them have an entry-level DAC. And this is no different. The benefits of this DAC. Number one, it'll fit on your um, MT604, which is the little stereo. It's a balanced only tube uh, amp, which is up on my desk upstairs because it's so fucking great. Not that you need that to match the form factor. And in fact, this doesn't have any volume controls, so that wouldn't work in the way I want you to use that particular um, tube amp. Back has your plug. Your power's in the rear. I'm gonna yell, stop putting power in the rear, put power in the front. Although, I wonder if I hold this down long enough if it'll shut off. No. It's literally just brightness and LED on or off. That That's all it's got. That, that's literally all this has. Can you hold it to get out of it? Yeah, whatever. Um, you have a USB full size. You have a USB audio switch between 1.0 and 2.0, depending on which one you want to go with. 2.0 is less compatible with older devices. You get your fiber optic input. You get your coaxial digital input. Standard DAC shit right here. Boom, boom, boom. You get your balanced output. Pretty sure it's balanced. Like... I don't know, it's 2022. A lot of shit's been like becoming balanced. That isn't balanced. They just made a balance there for your convenience. I'm pretty sure it's balanced. So you get your balanced XLR outputs and you get your non-balanced RCA outputs. Why you would buy this particular deck over a shit or an SMSL or a topping is form factor. That That's the one thing I can give. I, why I wanted like the series to work. There's no amps in this shape except for the 604 tube. But look how short this is. Most DACs, once you add the XLRs, they're fucking huge. But look at, look, this is like seven inches from like a crushed XLR turn. On these are the world's best XLRs. Not because they're the world's best XLRs, because they're the world's best XLRs, which actually are the world's best, X, X, best XLRs. Look how little space this will take up on your desk using those. They even sell right angle converters. So you could honestly, you don't have to convert them up or down and then push this against the wall and have the wires go behind your desk. But you could make this real fucking flat if you needed to. That That's the benefit. Sound wise, it's good enough. It's just, I'm listening. I skip through it, but just back in shuffle mode. Hold on. I mean, I'm using like $700 planars that I absolutely fucking adore. Thank you, Linsoul, again, for sponsoring this video. Through a, an amplifier, I absolutely adore. So that through a music that I absolutely fucking adore, usually, maybe, and it's not all great. But this is now the new thing in the chain, and if I hated it, it'd be the fault. I close my eyes. I don't know. This is High School of the Dead? The fuck? Oh, Spirit from High School of the Dead? Are you sure this soundtrack didn't get messed up? That sounds fucking amazing. Yeah, if I could say any songs at all sound fucking amazing, then obviously this is not the bottleneck at the moment. W would a oh, $700 Archwire deck sound probably better? Yeah, probably. In fact, I tested it. There was definitely a different sound shape and feel to it. But... For the price this is, I'm not gonna knock it. It actually functions as it's supposed to. Do I gotta rewatch all of High School of the Dead? I think I do on my Discord. Actually, I think I wanna do Discord movie nights or Discord anime catch-ups. No one's watching Akiba Maid War and it's the goat of the season. You know, Chainsaw Man, Chainsaw Man, oh, power is hot. Bitch, have you seen maids kill each other for no reason? I have. You know, this is a, this is a quality DAC. It's not doing anything wrong. It doesn't sound nasal or mono. Or there's no problem with power, you know, voltage coming out of it. So this gets a this gets a full 
thumbs up from Zeos. Now we've got to move on to the last two things. Oh God, this video is going to take forever. Let me get this plugged in, which I'm going to do by I'm turning that off and then plugging this in. And then, so I'll give you the tour of this unit before I shut the camera off and set it all up. This is the M Wow. Where? Over there? You don't know? He might have been in the chairs. Is like, the space here? Wow. Where is it? I don't, I agree with you. Marl. Marbles. All right, so final, well, no, not final, but $129 gives you this little guy, which is the Butt Basic, I don't know why it's called Butt Basic, but I get that, MU601. So power, same 12 volt transformer. You have a USB in the back with a one and two switch for the format, a coaxial out, which is rare, honestly, to have a USB in and coaxial out. So it'll do a conversion, so you could use another DAC. So this will be a DAC, it has two RCA outs, so you could feed two different so two different things, either an amplifier like this and speakers like that, although there's no control, you'd have to control the control at the source. So you get two outputs here and a coaxial output, which means you could plug it to another DAC, like the 604, and then you'd have RCA out, RCA out, out bounce out, RCA out. So you gotta just keep stacking them across. Um, and it's not that much cheaper than the 604. If you need balance, you get the 604, which also has this feature, USB uh, input in the front. So it has a USB in the back and USB in the front. I think it just overrides. There's no switch. There's only switches for power here. And it's very, very understated. You got a little glowing logo there. You get it says 48K there. And if you look on the screen in the right light, other than seeing the fingerprints, it does 384, does DSD 64, DSD 128, and DSD 256. I honestly don't think, and you tell me if I'm wrong, if you're a music aficionado, hardcore, more hardcore than I am, and your music has DSD like 256 in it, like in your collection, are you buying a $129 DAC? Probably not. Anyway. Enemy. They tell you how much I love the show Arcane. Fuck Imagine Dragons if you don't like them or anything. And fuck League of Legends. And this insanely fuck League of Legends. I never played it, but I know it hurts people's emotions. But that show is probably the best piece of media ever created. <laughs> don't take that lightly, motherfuckers. Um, oh, I'm trying to change tracks with this, and it's this. So, you yeah, know, I'm, I'm getting the same, like, the quality DAC, this is another ESS Sabre DAC. They actually say the model number of the DAC in this one. It is the ES90182M Sabre. And you know what? That's fine. I, I would like to see this at $99. $129 is like, why would you buy this at $129 when you can get that for only like $30 more? And it's balanced. And it's got the same things. It's got buttons and lights i don't know it's just a it's just a decent small dac i wish it had coaxial or fiber optic inputs it would be more useful to me personally but for like just hooking up and actually i didn't even know this cable would work for ogg but puts up a giant cable to it it's outputting from a phone straight into that outputting from there into an excellent app and headphone setup you could bounce it into another one 129 i could accept it i'd like to see it at 99 Ah. All right, back to pausing that. So now, the last thing I'm going to look at. Oh, because this has been sitting on the desk, and this is definitely not from APOS. I think this might be from Aoshita, or I can look up. I have a, a, a chat where I just send who sent me what. But this little guy here is the last little baby baby. N NFJ and FX Audio. Uh... Uh, BL-Muse-01 Pro Plus Bluetooth audio receiver. And it's just a Bluetooth audio receiver. It's it's a simple thing. I'll have to look up the price. If it can't be more if it's more than $50, uh, just don't. Look look check the link. If it's more than 50, don't. 
Um, it's cute. It's got an on, off, and select button. And it has Bluetooth but light, display, and A out and B out. So, yeah, A is here, analog, and B is here, optical and coax allowed. So it will give it to that to you, and you get to select if you want your analog output or your digital output. Kind of nice. I think it'll probably do both also. The only problem is this exists, which is another X-Duo, and I've had this forever, like for since I moved to the house, I think. And it's a Bluetooth receiver with a play, pause, power button, and a little screen that shows you what you're playing Bluetooth, and then you get your coaxial optical and left and right outs. And it's powered via a USB-C versus a 12-volt adapter that this fucking thing needs. So give me a second to hook this up, and I'll compare again. Uh, what did I say? What did I say? If it's over $50, don't. $47.99 on Linsoul and sold out, this is useless. So yeah, here's your little, um, the FX Muse 01 guy right here. Um, see, that's that's the killer right there. I hit the power, I hit the select button and now it's disconnected my Bluetooth. But now it's back. It tried to connect to something else. Oh, now it's on B. Instead of A, so we're not getting any output here, but it is connected to that. Is that how you switch? Does it have to break the Bluetooth connectivity? Because I thought I was just trying to search for Bluetooth again, and I had to, like, hold or figure out a fucking secret menu. If this comes back on, it's on B again. Now it's on A. Oh, God, that's useless. It's not useless. Like, if you want to switch from the RSA outputs to the digital outputs you have to basically reset your entire Bluetooth connection and then it will do it. But that's dumb. Just output to both all the time. I mean, it's kind of nice you could switch it, but it shouldn't have to like literally break the Bluetooth connection, turn the whole unit off, reboot the unit in the other option. That's, I mean, it's 47, it's not for sale. It doesn't matter, you can't buy it. I would do the XQ50 Pro or again, a lot of the things on this desk those fucking monsters BTA 30 the the FIO unit it, it's a still confusing unit but it's like it's proven its track record I literally keep it on the desk for testing well it's 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 in the pile of things but I keep it because if I'm testing a Bluetooth headphone I don't want to fucking connect to my phone every time I want to use my media library hook it up there it's a sender and a receiver none of these are senders and receivers they're all receivers so that's a sender and receiver and optical and coaxial and ins and outs. And it's got a volume knob. That's a knob. So the FIO wins. FIO BTA 30 in the description, everybody. So now I can shut all this shit off and you can download that wallpaper and support me on Patreon and subscribe star. For love of God, for my mental health, please support me on subscribe star on Patreon. Please. Please, God. Oh, Lord. Okay. So um, links to everything. The wallpaper in the hoard, including the little snippet of .jpg at the end, and you can figure out how to put that into Imager. You'll get it um, if you don't want to go through the whole problem, the process of getting the Imager. But the the hoard is now fixed. Patreon and subscribe star. See these reviews early because these are critical, critical listening. Um, see these reviews early. Um, participate in yard sales. I will be selling everything from this fucking video. Pretty much except for this. I'm keeping that. Um, but yeah, no, I don't think I need. I, I got to make sure this works. If this doesn't work, I'm not selling it. Unless it doesn't work, and then I'll sell it, and you're like, I need a brick. Just throw it someone's window. XQ10. Uh, XQ100. Uh, yeah, Patreon, subscribe, see reviews early, participate in yard sales, hear lost of sound demos. I got to get on that. I'm way behind. $10 a month gets you in the private behind-the-scenes Telegram chat, where, how the fuck am I taking the thumbnail for this? Oh, it's going to be a fucking, just a little pile of them. Um... Yeah, talk to me directly, ask me questions directly when you're in the $10 chat. You get to ask other people's questions. You get to a lifetime swap me channel. Uh, Hi-Fi Guides, Hi-Fi Go. Thank you to Linsoul, my sponsor for this video. Linsoul, who, Linsoul sent me the one thing and I'm just like, meh. So thank you for that and this. These are the things you can get on Linsoul. Great headphones and okay Bluetooth uh, receivers or send, send receivers receivers only receiver anyway I'm done you're done thank you good night I'll uh, fucking just just, just uh